All right, welcome to Mitchell Elf. This is Insect Life Cycles, and this is Center 2, Find Your Kind. The goal of Center 2 is for students to experience the variety of ways insects send and receive signals with their mates. Um, ahead of time, it says in the outline, um, you should find some time to read um, this Firefly's Magic Lanterns, and it is not that long. It shouldn't take you more than um, maybe three or four minutes to skim through it. And you should also ahead of time read the information cards that have information on insect hearing, sense of smell, sight, communication, and insect sense of touch. Um, so it's a, it would be important ahead of time to familiar yourself, familiarize yourself with um, the information that are that are in these um, included um, laminated sheets um, and it's also this is also when you might want to get a little bit of set up ahead of time how you want to do your groups um, I will also say ahead of time that it's super important there are um, scent canisters that you should probably check ahead of time to make sure they've got enough scent in them and um, flashlights that need to for sure be turned off all the way and um, check ahead of time too to make sure that they have all the batteries in. If you find that either the sense or the batteries are low, please, please, please let us know immediately. Or if you use it and you know they're low, let me know so that we can get there um, and do it. I Both Carrie and I are on schedules where we can't always be there right the next day. So it's important to let us know ahead of time if you can. Um, so, um, as you start your center, there are all kinds of other handouts too that are great for the kids to go over. And that I think is always important to do before you get into the hands-on activity. There's um, a whole article from Ranger Rick called Go With a Glow that you could read with the kids or go over the highlights parts. Um, there's information on katydids and how they hear. There's a great um, cartoon, Jimmy the Bug and um, information on butterflies and their senses that you um, might want to go over just ahead of time before you dive into the activity so that you've got their attention and they've got some background information as they move forward. Um, as you get started, you'll ask the kids um, that you'll let them know that you're going to do, you're going to help them learn about how insects communicate um, at night because all these insects are active at night and you might want to get them to brainstorm about how they might do that and what might be some things they would do differently than other animals or even human beings. Um, then you're going to divide the students into two groups, group A and group B, and each group is going to take turns at each station acting as either the sender or the receiver of the signals. And you might have to um, volunteer so that there's an even number too. So um, center part one is about scent and it's related to moths. So you'll discuss how moths locate each other using their sense of smell. Included in this bin are, is a bag of film canisters that have been labeled into two groups, group A and group B, and um, they they're, um, have different scents in them. So the kids are going to um, line up and um, group A will line up and you'll give each of them a canister that has the scented cotton ball in it and then group B will line up and they get to smell their film canisters and then they need to find their group A member that has the matching smell and you can mix the canisters up within the group and then have them the groups A and B switch roles so that now the A's are trying to find out which one has the same scent. Um, in the outline it says to replace the lids as soon as possible to keep the scents fresh and replenish them as necessary. There will be a box in there that has stuff to replenish them. Um, so if you find out that they're not smelling very strong, you can do that. I tried to secretly code them. So like, like A, this A, and this B both have a dot a dot right on the side of the lid. Um, there's another A that has um, 
a black line on the side. There's another A that has two dots like that. There's another A or a B that has a line underneath. I tried to be super secretive, but that hopefully will help you um, keeping things straight and, and helping the kids um, locate their mate as they use scent for a form of communication. Um, so, um, part two is sight, and that's with the flashlights, and this is fireflies. And since there are no fireflies in Colorado, you might want to discuss, this might be the perfect time to discuss what makes lightning bugs light up, which I think is right here, this handout on how insects communicate. And that um, will give you some information on that. And then you can dive into um, explaining that different kinds of fireflies use different light signals to, co to connect. Male fireflies light up in the air to flash their mating signals. The female firefly waits below on the ground or in the bushes. When the female firefly recognizes the right signal, she gives a special blink and the male flies down to her and they mate. So, um, this bag says firefly codes and in here are different sheets. It's kind of like Morse code, different cards. This one, for instance, would be long, short, long. So when you line the kids up, you need to make sure that one kid has long, short, long in group A and one has long, short, long in group B. And they will use these flashlights and do long, short, long. And hopefully someone else will flash back at them and they will have located their mate. Um, for grades K through one, um, you might want to, the adult might want to be the one to flash the signals and then all the kids um, can flash back with their card when they see the one that they have. Um, and just you can repeat that until they all had a turn. In, group, in grades two through four, um, you'll divide them like I discussed in group A and group B. And then go ahead and um, switch it so that everybody has a chance to be the sender and everybody has the chance to be the receiver of the signals. And finally, the last form of communication is crickets. And that's sound. And so you'll explain that male crickets chirp and female crickets are attracted to the song of their species. So we have cricket cards. So bear with me while I'm filming by myself. Um, cricket cards, which are not opening, that are in this Ziploc bag. And they say cricket cards. And they have different sayings on them, like pit, pit, and click, and tss, tss, and chirp, and zzz, and I think that's it. And then they start over, and then, whoops, that goes there. And then there's another set for the mates. And so it's the same idea as all the other activities, a group A and a group B. And you're listening, but they all, if, if you can get them all to go at the same time, then they've got to, the receiver has to listen extra careful to find their mate, like which one is going bzzz while um, everybody else is doing their particular sound communication. So, um, I think that's about it for this center. Sorry this video was so long. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to email us at mitchellelf at gmail.com and happy insect communicating. Thanks.